In this video, I am going to talk about row echelon form. In our last lesson, we discussed using row operations to put a matrix into a sort of triangular form so that we can solve systems of linear equations. Now, in order to make this idea precise, we will be making use of echelon form. What does echelon mean? Well, echelon is a military term that is used to describe a particular formation like what is this is shown in the figure below before we discuss the row echelon form of a matrix we have to define first what a leading entry means the leading entry is the first non-zero element in each row of a matrix for example here in the first row we do not have any leading entry on the second row, we have your leading entry of negative 1, that is the first non-zero element. And on the third row, we have the leading entry of 3. A matrix is said to be in row echelon form or REF when it satisfies the following conditions. First, all rows consisting entirely of zeros occur at the bottom of the matrix. So that would mean... We have something like this. These are your row of zeros. Second is that the leading entries go down and to the right. A consequence of this is that all entries in a column below a leading entry are all zeros. So for example, you have the leading entry here leading entry here and some leading entry here and then you can have anything here but since these are leading entries everything here would be zero all right so as you can see there if a row has more zeros on it it will sort of sink in your matrix the higher the number of your zeros in your matrix the more that it will occur at the bottom next all leading entries will be equal to 1. So now we know that this is not just equal to star. The leading entry must be equal to 1. Hence, a matrix in REF looks something like this. Let's see whether this matrix here is in echelon form. Let's look at all the properties one by one. All rows consisting entirely of zeros occur at the bottom of the matrix. Take note here that you have a row of zeros and it should occur here at the bottom. So right there and then the answer here is no. But anyway, for the sake of completion, let us check all the other properties. Next, leading entries go down and to the right. Although that one, the leading entry here is negative 1. The leading entry on the third row is 6. So this one is correct. However, the third property, all leading entries are equal to 1, this is no. Hence, this is not in echelon form. Although again, we already knew that just because property 1 was not satisfied. Next, let's take a look at this example. Is this in echelon form? We do not have any rows containing entirely of 0, so hence, 1 is automatically satisfied. Next, let us look at the leading entries. The leading entry in the first row is here. This is the leading entry on the second row and this is the leading entry on the third row. So obviously this one here is satisfied. They go down and strictly to the right. And number three, all leading entries are equal to one. This is the only thing that is not satisfied because of this leading entry. Two here. So the answer here is no. How about this one? Well, we have a row of zeros. It occurs at the bottom, so this one is checked. Let's look at the leading entries. The leading entries are 1 and 1 here, and they go down and to the right. So this is satisfied. And next, all leading entries are equal to 1. This is also true. So therefore, yes, this is in echelon form. Let us recall the augmented matrix in the end that we obtained in our last video lesson. This is that augmented matrix. As you can see here, 
this is in row echelon form. Of course, there are no row of zeros. The leading entries go down and to the right, and all of them are equal to 1. So hence, this is in REF. And let us recall also that once we have that the matrix is in REF, we can already solve for the system of equations. In this case, we have x, y, z. We were able to get that z is equal to 2 because of the third equation. And then for the second equation, we have that y plus z is equal to 5. But z is equal to 2. So therefore, y is equal to 3. And from the first equation, we have that x minus 2y plus 3z is equal to 9. And upon substituting the values of z and y, we can get that x is equal to 1. As we have seen here, once we know the REF of an augmented matrix, it will now be easy to solve the system of equations. However, the problem with this is just by looking at this augmented matrix, I do not necessarily know the values of x, y, and z. I can just say that z is equal to 2, but I still have to use back substitution in order for me to solve for the values of x and y. To remedy that, we will be talking about another form of a matrix so that just by looking at the augmented matrix, we would be able to tell immediately what the values of the variables are. By that form, I am referring to the reduced row echelon form, and this one would make it even easier to determine the solutions for the corresponding system of linear equations. Let's now go dig into the definition of reduced row echelon form, or RREF. As you notice here, these three properties are already properties of a matrix in REF. The only difference is that you need to have an additional property that must be satisfied. And that is, all leadings in a column above a leading entry are all zeros. Now take note that if we combine this and this, look at that, it would mean that all entries in a column below and above a leading entry must be zeros. This is saying that suppose I have a leading entry here and I have leading entries here, the entries above and below would all be equal to zero. So that is how a matrix in REF would look like. Hence, we have this alternative definition of a matrix in RREF. We still have this three conditions except that the fourth condition says that each leading entry is the only non-zero entry in its column because the difference with REF if is you have one here if this is the leading entry all zeros here but you can have some values here non-zero values on top of your leading entry but for REF we cannot have that all of this should be equal to zero. Let's see whether the matrix over here is in RREF. We have a row of zeros appearing at the bottom, so this is satisfied. Where are our leading entries? 1, 1, 1. They are all equal to 1 and they go down and to the right. Let's check the fourth condition. Each leading entry is the only non-zero entry in its column. Here, 1 is the only non-zero entry here also. And so is for this one. This is satisfied, so therefore, yes, this is in RREF. Let's look at this example. We have a row of zero here at the bottom. This is true. All leading entries are equal to 1, leading entry, leading entry, leading entry, leading entry. That's correct. 
but this one is not satisfied. Leading entries go down and to the right because of this one over here. So this is wrong. And although, of course, the answer is, is already no, let's just check the fourth condition. Each leading entry is the only non-zero entry in its column. For this one, everything is zero above and below it, above and below, above and below. But for this leading entry here, we have non-zero entries on top. So this one is also not satisfied. Now that we've learned how a matrix in REF or RREF looks like, we are going to talk about the process of transforming a given matrix to its REF or RREF. Next, we will also use these forms to solve for the solutions in the corresponding system of linear equations.